Mina, con bonwa, Jesus freaking gamer here. Back here to end the book of Judges, and I'm partially a bit happy to be out of it just because the end of this book is depressing. It's just so sad how the Israelites completely left God behind and some of the crap that they fell into. And I'm going to get into a little bit more of that right here. I'm going to back up to chapter 20. Verse 47, because it's important for context. But 600 men turned and fled toward the wilderness to the rock of Ramon, and they stayed at the rock of Ramon for four months. And the men of Israel turned back against the children of Benjamin and struck them down with the edge of the sword. From every city, men and beasts, all who were found. They also set fire to all the cities they came to. Now I also covered in the last video, which was my Sunday sermon, how they basically just they almost annihilated Benjamin. Benjamin was almost completely wiped out. So then in chapter 21, the people start regretting the fact that one tribe of Israel is gone. Chapter 21, verse 1, Now the men of Israel had sworn an oath at Mizpah, saying, None of us shall give his daughter to Benjamin as a wife. Then the people came to the house of God and remained there before God till evening. They lifted up their voices and wept bitterly and said, O Lord God of Israel, why has this come to pass in Israel that today there should be one tribe missing in Israel? Benjamin was almost completely wiped out. So what is the solution to this? Maybe they should just finish annihilating Benjamin. Maybe they should just kill the rest of Benjamin off and one tribe should be completely gone. And let's be honest, and this statement is not going to be popular and doesn't sound nice, but it is true. It's not like genocide was unheard of in those days. If all of Benjamin sided with Gibeah who did such horrible things, maybe the answer at that time was to completely wipe them out and have 11 tribes instead of 12. Again, that doesn't sound good to the modern day mind, but back then, let's face it, that is a potential option, or was, for that period in time. Another thing that they could have done, and this sounds perfectly fine to the modern mind, and it would definitely be acceptable to have done for them not to have sworn that oath to begin with. And the way they uh, the way they get around this oath, the way Benjamin doesn't just like completely die off, go down to verse 16. And the elders of the congregation said, What shall we do for wives for those who remain since the women of Benjamin have been destroyed. And they said there must be an inheritance for the survivors of Benjamin that a tribe may not be destroyed from Israel. However, we cannot give them wives from our daughters, for the children of Israel have sworn an oath, saying, Cursed be the one who gives a wife to Benjamin. Then they said, In fact, there is a yearly feast of the Lord in Shiloh, which is north of Bethel, on the east side of the highway that goes up from Bethel to Shechem and south of Lebanon. Therefore they instructed the children of Benjamin, saying, by the way, they knew where these um, survivors of Benjamin were. You go back to verse 13, and the whole congregation sent word to the children of Benjamin who were at the Rock of Ramon and announced peace to them. So they knew where they, these survivors were. It's not like the genocide thing couldn't have happened. It could have. They chose not to. And yes, the, um, the numbers between, just backing up to verse 47, 600 men went to the Rock of Ramon, you go back to my previous message and you read chapter 20, 20 in its entirety, and there were more than 600 survivors. Now, whether some were at Ramon and some were elsewhere, I don't know. Perhaps only those at the Rock of Ramon survived because, because they, the 600 men, they killed everyone. The 600 my, um, bleh, words. The 600 men that were left at the Rock of Ramon Maybe the others that had been alive were killed when the Israelites turned back and sh turned against the children of Benjamin, struck them down with the edge of the sword in verse 48. Not sure if it was the 600 or the, I think it was 1900 that were left over. Whatever those numbers are, someone out there can do the math. Maybe I should have done it before this message. I apologize. That probably would have been proper <laughs> preparation, which apparently I didn't do. Going back here, so they instructed the, back to verse 20 in chapter 21, they instructed the children of Benjamin saying, 
go lie and wait in the vineyards and watch, and just when the daughters of Shiloh come out to perform their dances, then come out from the vineyards, and every man catch a wife for himself from the daughters of Shiloh, then go to the land of Benjamin. And then it shall be, when their fathers or their brothers come to us to complain, that we will say to them, Be kind to them for our sakes, because we did not take a wife for any of them in the war. For it is not as though you have given the woman to them at this time, making yourselves guilty of your oath. Let's kidnap them, which is punishable by, mur by death, by murdering them in the Mosaic Law. Just kidnap them. Steal these women, these daughters, away from their fathers and brothers. That's the solution. That way we don't have to break our oath. That way they, that way they don't have to break their oath. And that way the tribe of Benjamin can survive. And so at this point, I'm just kind of like done with the book of Judges. And again, I'm kind of glad. Verse 25 sums it up well. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. So instead of breaking your oath, which is punishable by death, kidnap a bunch of people, which is also punishable by death. Double face palm. I'm done. Judges is done. And the, ta and, um, the time of being, there being no judge in Israel is also about to be done in the book of Samuel. And in the meantime, there's this really nice little book, which is just a nice little love story called Ruth in between 1 Samuel and Judges, which I'm going to be going into in the next few days, which will be quite enjoyable, but yeah. If I was to make a bottom line here, obviously, you know, if you, if you don't have a wife, don't go out and kidnap a girl. There's a good point. Secondly, Jesus summed it up very nicely, don't swear anything. Let your yes be yes, and let your no be no. And if something does come up, it, Jesus didn't say this part. If something comes up where something invalidates your word, it's not like you've sworn an oath and you're bound to something. If something, ha if you're like, hey, let's hang out, and then an emergency comes up, like, I'm sorry, we can't hang out. This emergency came up, you haven't broken your word, you haven't bro and you haven't broken any oath to the Lord. And thirdly, and this isn't controversial to any believer, obey God from the beginning. Don't go off and do whatever the heck you want. Your life and the lives of everyone around you will be much better off because you didn't do that. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you, and God bless.